Welcome back everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today we're making a very large planted no filter vase. I'm excited, hope you guys are excited as well. Let's get started. So I've actually made a no filter planted vase two years ago. And that was kind of my first experience with no filter aquariums. So it was just a very simple setup. We had a vase, we had a light, and that was all the technical equipment. Uh, the plants were doing the filtration, and every so often I would just do a water change and a little bit of maintenance. It was very easy to care for. We also had a thriving colony of cherry shrimp, and I really got a lot of enjoyment out of that setup. I think it was also one of the most viewed videos on my channel right now. So at some point I got rid of it, but I always told myself, like, I want to do something like that again, but maybe on a slightly larger scale. Yeah, so a few weeks ago I went to my local garden center to look for something slightly bigger and somehow I came home with this behemoth. So this thing measures uh, 40 centimeters tall and it's 28 centimeters across. So it holds roughly 25 liters. Yeah, I think that's roughly six or seven US gallons. So that's a 35 liter tank right there. So you can kind of see the, yeah, the scale. It's a, it's a pretty big vase. So they had a lot of these things in my local garden center, but I chose this one because it has relatively thick glass. I think this is maybe three or four millimeters, something like that. And the base is relatively thick as well. So sometimes, you know, these glass vases can be very thin and fragile because, you know, normally a vase you would only fill up to about here because the rest will be just flowers or a bouquet or something like that, you know. But I made sure that this one is uh, quite thick. So yeah, I think this is a good vessel for our, uh, our new no filter scape. Okay, first thing I want to do is cut out a little foam mat for this vase. So I have these foam mats underneath all my things and they're just a bit of a security measure. You can imagine once this vase is filled up with water and rocks and gravel, it's quite heavy. And if you have like a tiny object sitting underneath this vase, that can become a pressure point and actually can actually break the glass. So we want to, of course, prevent that from happening. So just a little foam mat. This costs absolutely nothing. So I'm just going to cut out the circle. And that's it. Okay, that's our format done. Now we need a light. This was a bit tricky because of the round corners, you know, not every crumb light fits on there, but I think I found something good. I recently got a few new products from Dandela. They've also sent me this Troco style 2, 8 watts. So this is for tanks from 30 to 60 liters, 1280 lumens, and it's 6,500 Kelvin. So it's a nice daylight. So let's see if this fits on this vase. Here we go, that's the light. It's quite big, but it's perfect for this vase because it has this sort of like a clip on the back. That's a little bit flexi flexible as well. So we should be able to clamp this on top of the vase. Here we go. Boom, we have light. Here we go, that's our light installed, looking good. It's quite bright, it's quite powerful. Maybe a bit too powerful actually for a low tech setup, but uh, we can always just use a bunch of floating plants to dim the light a bit. Let's move on, let's uh, go make a nice hardscape. I've already been playing around with the hardscape these past few days, so I know exactly what we're going to make today. I have a couple of really nice pieces of wood. This stuff right here is called Antwood. It's a product from Strideways. And I've already used this piece once before in my no filter guppy aquarium. I'll overlay a clip so you guys can see how that looked. And I really like this wood because it's very easy to work with. I mean, this stuff doesn't release any tannins. It doesn't grow any mold like some other types of wood do, red more wood, for example. And yeah, it has some really nice lines. So I have three pieces of this, two big ones and one small one. And then I also have three big rocks. This is uh, called relief stone. It's basically lava rock, but it's a bit more dense and it has a bit more character than your regular black lava rock. So yeah, really good stuff. So let me show you guys what I have in mind. what I had in mind. I think that looks pretty good. I like all the curves that we have going on here. So I would like to have some cosmetic sand in the foreground here. Then the background we can fill in with aquasol and substrate and make that a good biological filter because we're not going to have any filtration here. 
and then we can just add in a load of plants. I think it's going to look really good. Now these pieces would have been outside, so they're a bit wet, but I'm pretty sure that they are still going to float up to the surface. So I'm just going to glue everything down just to, uh, just to be safe. And as always, I'm going to use my uh, cotton pads for that. So uh, for anyone who hasn't seen this method yet, I always like to use these cotton pads. I kind of pull them apart and then just take little pieces like that, kind of push them together. And then with my tweezers, I'll grab them and then I'll wedge them in between the two points that I want to connect. So here in front, for example, the, two, the piece of wood and the rocks are touching each other. So I'm going to wedge it in between there. You can see that it's tightly wedged in between the rock and the wood. So now we take some liquid type super glue and we basically saturate that entire cotton piece with the super glue. And if you need a really strong bond, you can take a little bit of baking soda, just to sprinkle a little bit of that baking soda on top of the cotton pad, then apply some more glue and then you have a super strong bond, like nothing is going to move that anymore. Of course, this will kind of alter the water parameters a little bit as well, so it might raise the water hardness a little bit. So if you're using a lot of this, just make sure you do an extra water change or something. Okay, we're done gluing. I basically just repeated that process about five or six times, and now everything is just completely stuck together. Nothing is going to move anymore. So now we can move on to the substrate. So I have a few things I want to use. First of all, Wetland Eonian Black. This is basically just crushed black lava rock. And this will be a good home for beneficial bacteria, which is something we definitely need a lot of in a no-filter setup. Then I have some leftover uh, fluval stratum. So this is Aquasil, contains some, uh, some nutrients as well. And then in the foreground, so basically in that area, I want to have some nice cosmetic sand. So I've got some Rio Sand Tigris. In my first no-filter phase, I had some cosmetic sand in the foreground as well. But one issue that kept coming back is that the Aquasol would start rolling forward and start mixing with the soap with the sand. That just looks very unsightly. So I have some small gaps here in underneath the rocks and on the sides. So I'm gonna close those gaps with a little bit of filter wool. And this, uh, you might see it in the beginning, but after, after a while that will get dirty and will get darker and we're not gonna see it anymore. Okay, there's all the gaps closed. Yeah, it just looks a little bit odd right now, but uh, by the end of this video, none of that will be visible anymore. So now we can move on to the substrate. I'll first fill in the layer of the uh, crushed lava rock, then I'll top that with the fluval stratum, and I might do the, strand, the sand straight away, maybe I will save it for later. Okay, that's the substrate layer in. Let's take a look from the top. So we have quite a thick substrate layer. I think in the back it's almost like 10 centimeters. That's good, you know, especially in these no filter tanks, you want to have quite a thick substrate layer because the substrate will do a lot of the filtration for you. And also it's quite a high vase, you know, it's 40 centimeters. So if you have a higher substrate, then the stems will be closer to the light as well. And you will not have these like bare stems with without any leaves. So a thick substrate layer. Now let's move on with the cosmetic sand. I've also washed some of these um, small pebbles. So they look a little bit, or they're almost the same color as the black lava rock, so they will match nicely and give a nice contrast in the, uh, in the white sand. Right then, I think that's the hard scape done. A little look from the top. Nice. Yeah, the, uh, the sand really brought it together. The small little pebbles as well. Some nice details. Most of the white filter floss has already been covered up as well. So now we just need to figure out which uh, plants we want to use. And as always, we have a beautiful, healthy selection of plants kindly provided by Dandelion Plants. So we have some nice in vitro giant moss. I have a crypt here, the Crypt Wendetii Broadleaf. Some Boos of Landera, of course, Boos Syrian Boo Brown. And they have a new plant here, the Anubias Nana Jade. So this is a jade green Anubias. Really, really beautiful. Yeah, the color is not really showing, but it's a really interesting color. 
And then here we have some water sprite, we have some Liliopsis, we have some Merophyllum and a few other plants. I'm gonna start with this, probably end up using a lot more than this, but uh, let's just start with this. Okay, so plants are all prepared, but I do have some doubts about the Anubius Jade, the Jade Green. Um, the leaves are quite big and I think it's gonna kind of ruin the sense of scale that we have going on right here. So for example, I was thinking maybe some over here inside that gap, for example, you know. I know it's quite big, you know, it just, yeah, it's a beautiful plant. I just don't think it really fits in this particular layout. Over here in this aquarium, I have some really small Anubias. Look at that. I think that will actually work much better in this cape. Okay, I'm gonna start in the center area here. There's a lava rock underneath it, so I just need to check where I can actually plant in. So here's a rock, here's a rock. This part here is all empty. And then here we have a rock again. So there's not really a lot of space, but we can make it work. So the first plant to go in there will be the Blixa Japonica. I've been using this a lot lately and it really is one of my favorite plants. Then on the left side, I'm gonna plant uh, Merifilum Guiana. So this is a very small, very delicate stem plant, but it's really beautiful. It doesn't grow too fast either, so it should be relatively low maintenance as well. So that's good. Then in front of the Guiana, I'm gonna plant Limnophila Vietnam. So this is another small and slow growing stem plant. And just in front of that, I'm gonna plant one bunch of the Crypto Wendigia broadleaf. I've not used this crypt a whole lot, but I feel like because it's in vitro, it stays relatively small as well. So it should work in that position. I'm gonna wedge another one over there. The roots will eventually find their way into the substrate. Then I'm gonna use a little bit of this giant moss to cover up those last bits of white filter floss. So I've just applied a little bit of super glue to the moss and then I'm just gonna press it in there. Then the in vitro bush of Landra, I'm actually gonna glue them to some of these smaller rocks like I've already used in the foreground here. And then I can just place them on top of there and just kind of move them around wherever I like. Yeah, I think we're almost there. I've planted the water sprite behind the wood. I think that look, looks nice. And on the right side, I've planted some of the uh, Liliopsis. I think we have a little bit more space in between there for one stem plant, so we should grab something red. I have some crazy red uh, Rotala orange juice in this tank. So I think I'm gonna take a few stems of that and plant that in the uh, vase as well. Okay, I think that's our XXL vase planted, all done. I'm really happy with the end result. I think it's gonna look amazing. I like that we still kept most of the hardscape visible. Yeah, let's, uh, let's fill it up. So the vase has been up and running for three weeks now. It's definitely grown in a bit, it's looking good. So it's ready for some inhabitants. I'm thinking we should definitely get some shrimp, but maybe some fish as well. I mean, it's a vase, but it's still quite big. I mean, it's 25 liters, so I think it's big enough for some small fish, but just not really sure what to get yet. So I'm in my local fish shop, uh, Hames. And I mean, in terms of shrimp, we are definitely spoiled for choice. So they have loads of red rileys. They've got the blue ones. They've got orange ones. We've got some really nice crystal reds, uh, yellow shrimp, crystal blacks, and the red ones as well. And here they have the green jades, so they have loads of options. Water is slightly murky here, I think they just did some maintenance, but... Yeah, which one should we go for? I already have the orange ones, I already have the blue ones. And I have the red ones as well, but... Um, I think... I'm actually leaning more towards the red ones because they will definitely pop in that vase, you know? And then in terms of fish, they have these small chili rasboras. So these guys are really nice and they could definitely be a, a good option for the vase. I was also looking at these guys. It's a bit hard to see, but these are called emerald rasboras, so slightly different than the galaxies, but um, it's 
still a very nice fish. Maybe just a bit too big for a vase. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for the red cherry shrimp. I already have some at home, but these guys are just better colored. They just look nicer and they will definitely stand out in the vase. And a small group of the chili reservoirs as well. I think that's just a really nice combination. We're back home, so we've got eight of the chili rasboras and I've got uh, 10 of the red cherry shrimp. Super exciting. Fun fact, the cherry shrimp are actually bigger than the chili rasboras. But yeah, they've been acclimating for a little bit and we're going to release them soon. I'm sure some people are wondering like, Mark, how on earth are you going to do maintenance on this vase? Because it's quite tall. And I'm not going to lie, that was actually something I kind of overlooked as well. I knew that I wanted to place the vase on the shelf, but kind of forgot that there would be limited space on top. It's actually, it's actually fine. I mean, doing water changes is easy. I've also got a little algae magnet here on the side, so that's also going to make maintenance easier. So really the only difficult thing will be trimming plants, but it's a no-filter setup. Plants are growing quite slowly, so it should be fine. Oh, and by the way, we actually already have some fish in the vase. Two days ago, I added two other sinkless just to kind of help with the algae cleanup. Not like there was any algae, but just to uh, make sure the tank stays nice and clean, you know. The only thing I'm having doubts about is the cosmetic sand, because as you can see, there's already some fish poop and snail poop visible so that's not very attractive but if it starts to bother me then I can always uh, swap to some gravel or something but yeah fish are and shrimp are acclimated so let's uh, release them I've got all the cherry shrimp so let's release them first I think I saw a few buried as well so that's nice should have some babies soon they're really super red they're big as well it's gonna be fun to see because the vase sort of has a magnifying effect. So the piece of wood in the middle, for example, looks much bigger right now. So I think the shrimp will look much bigger as well. That's cool. Yeah, I think going for the red cherry shrimp, I mean, even though they're quite standard and basic, they're still very nice and they will definitely stand out in here. I mean, we mostly have green plants. We do have the red stems on the side there, but they're just not as vibrant red anymore as when I first planted them. So these cherry shrimp are definitely going to stand out. Really happy with that. Okay, here come the chili rasboras. I've moved the camera closer because these guys are tiny. Literally half the size of the, uh, the cherry shrimp. There you go, guys. Welcome to your new home. It's going to be quite difficult to get a good focus on these chili rasboras. They're so small. They're very pale right now as well, but um, last weekend I was in the UK at Horizon Aquatics. And they had a display tank there with some chili rasboras as well. And they were super, super red. Never seen chili rasboras that vibrant red before, but it would be nice if these guys can get the same color. Mm -hmm. 